Jesus, we thank you. We thank you today. We pray a blessing over this service. God, speak to our hearts tonight. God, I know I'm hungry for you today. And I pray that there would be brothers and sisters here in this building, God, who don't just want a church service, but who really need to hear from you, oh God. Would you touch us and strengthen our hearts tonight, Lord? We love you, Father. And we ask, come, be in this place. Dwell in us. Melt our hearts today. And give us a word, Lord. Some of us, Lord, we just need a pick-me-up. We need encouragement, God. Life beats us down. God, and we, we, we lack and we, we get discouraged. Lord Jesus, come and meet with us tonight. That's why we're here, Lord. We love you, Father, and we thank you today. We worship you and we praise you because you alone, God, are worthy today. We praise you and bless your name in Jesus' name. And we all said aloud, amen. Amen. Can we give God one more praise? Amen. Um, but I have tonight a special guest who was with us uh, a couple months ago to share, or maybe a couple of weeks ago. Um, oh, yeah, and we can get ready to pass out the offering. I think that's what we do. Let's do it now anyways. Go for it. Um, so, yeah, we can laugh. We can loosen up, everybody. Relax. Pastor's not here. Let's have a good time. <laughs> um, so, anyways... Uh, this is <laughs> this is a dear brother um, who was willing because Marche, brother Mark, was going to speak tonight, but had this emergency over the weekend. And we have a faithful brother who uh, answered the call. Amen. Last minute, and I love this guy. He's my family. He's like an uncle to me. And my brother James Chapman is going to be giving us a word tonight. Come on. <laughs> we love you, brother James. Give us what God has for us tonight. Amen? Amen. Let's go home. <laughs> well, praise the Lord. I've come to know that <laughs> where it says, be ready all the time. <laughs> That's right. Now, I got this calling from the pastor. Today is Tuesday. I got it Sunday night. I said, okay. And I said, but I don't have nothing. He said, oh, you got it. So I left and I went home and, and um, don't let nobody tell you you don't get nervous. I, I'm talking to the crossroad boy. You get nervous. <laughs> Because I was, I was at home, I said, God, I ain't got nothing. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? do? And I even, I even called Timmy. <laughs> I said, Timmy, I got to give it to you, man. I need you to pray with me because I don't, I don't have anything. But when I went home last night, I got in my word, and, and uh, God said, you know what? Come out of you. And walk through me. I said, what you talking about, God? What you talking about? He said, take control of your thoughts. I said, hmm. What does that mean? So I got in the word and I prayed about it and I came up with this in the book of Colossians. The third chapter. Because everything we talk about is in the word. And we talk about the Colossians. They were, they were some characters. They, man, God, they were some characters. But during this time, Paul had to come back and, and, and re, reassure them of who they were. And in that, in the book of Colossians, let me put on my glass. Chapter 3, verses 1 through 8, reads as such. Since then you have been raised with Christ, set your hearts on things above where Christ is. Seated on the right hand of God, set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. Why? For you died 
that your life is now hidden in Christ. When Christ with your life appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. So, put on the Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature. That means us. Your old man, the old clothes. Mm. And that it says, uh, such as sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Because of these, the wrath of God is coming. You used to walk in these ways, emphasis. You used to walk in these ways in the life you once lived. But now you must also rid yourselves of all such things such as anger, rage, malice, slander, filthy language from your lips. The whole right there. Now, I come to find out to know that we can't stop and stop them from coming. But the thing of it is, is you can control the response of the thoughts. We can control it. As long as we keep our minds stayed on him. In Colossians uh, 3, 1 and 2, it says, we talked about, since then you have been raised with Christ. So when we were raised with Christ, just for the believers, as a matter of fact, since you have been raised with Christ, your heart, set your hearts on the things above where Christ is and seated at the right hand of God. And then you set your minds on the things above, not on earthly things. So in other words, when we got saved and became believers and took uh, the final say, the, the, the finalization of that, which was the baptism. And then when we went in the water and we came down, they took you, they said, we baptize you in the name of the Son, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and you go down. When you go down, that's a test. Actually, it's a eulogy. Because the old man dies, and then when we come up, we're renewed in Christ. We're renewed in Christ. Okay. Work with me. <laughs> we renewed in Christ. <laughs> so then, first part of that is to realize that we die. So have we died to our thought process? Verse 3 and 4 talking about dead to what? That old person, that old thoughts, them old ideas. We say that with our mouth. But are our response in our lives saying the same thing? Say, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Are we new? Or do we still have these same hidden things deep down in our spirit, man? Illicit sex, porn, moral indecencies, passions that cause us to do the things that are not right in the sight of God and which causes us to lose track with God because they can't please him. And in that too, also in Colossians <laughs> chapter 3, it was saying, you know, yeah, 3, 3 and 3 and 3 through 5, it talked about, for you are dead, you have died. Mm. And if we've died, then our life should, is now hidden with Christ. Okay, and if our life is hidden in Christ, then there should be a difference. It said, when Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. That's where we're going. So here, while we're here, yes, everything is not going to change overnight because it's a process. And it took time for you to get where you're at, so it's going to take a little time for you to get where you need to be. But the thing about it is it's always... A, a, a press, it's always a time because flesh has to die how? Daily. Every day. Every day we put down up. Uh, every day I put down James. Every day, 
Every day I, 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 I curve my language. Every day I ask God to keep me. Every day I ask that off my lips roll peace. Every day I, I ask God to just let me be an example before folks. But it's an ongoing journey. And there's three points. We got to realize to control our thoughts because you see this right here? Your mind, your mind is a control tower to your body. Your mind, that's the control tower. I went to the airport and I was looking at the control towers at the airport and I was thinking. I said, at the airport in the control tower, there's people in there. They direct the planes. They lead them to where they go, where they should go. And then if, if they don't do their job of directing and instructing, then planes fall and crashes. But guess what? If we don't allow the word of God to do what it's supposed to do in this control tower, that's when we start falling short and we come across. Because it's, it's, to me lately, I've been disappointed in areas when I trust, because the word of God tells me to trust not a man because of the error. But me, I love so hard and I love the people of God so much. And when you see them fall, it's, it hurts. Because when you see that they graduated to a, where you thought they should be matured in the area, and then you look around and they fall. You say, what happened? What happened? What happened? They were doing so well. What happened? What caused this? But the thing about it is, where was their mind? Where was their thought process? What was, were they reading the word? Maybe. Or were they reading something else? Was they watching? Uh, what were they watching on television? Yes, they watch certain things around certain people. But then when the people go to bed, because see, Crossroads, they have a, a time when they have to go to bed, but everybody don't go to bed. So what are they watching then? Are they, are they watching what can grow their souls? Are they watching what can mature their mind? Are they watching what pleasing God? Or are they just watching whatever satisfies the flesh? What are their thoughts? What are your thoughts? That's the key tonight. What are your thoughts? Yes, we come and, 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 and we come on Tuesday, we come on Sundays, and then we don't see each other for a while. Then what? When, tonight, when we, when we come and we pray and, and, and we say amen and we go to our uh, vehicles and we head on our different ways, where are your thoughts then? The battle starts now. We're in the war now. Sometimes, like when I came today, and, 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 and yes, I love Pastor Joy, too. I love him with all my heart. But guess what? When I stand before God Almighty, he ain't going to ask me, what did you do for Pastor Joy? He's not going to ask me that. That ain't going to be the question. I say, yes, I was there. I was always at church. I did blah, 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 blah. He said, he said, he said, he said okay, that sounds good. That sounds good, but what have you done for me? Where is your thought pattern? He has called us to be heirs of God, join us with Christ. He calls you to be kings and queens. He, we're royal priesthood, but why aren't we living that way? A thought pattern. I thought patterns, I was falling short. I have a scripture for the unbelievers. This is what they do. Second Corinthians 4, 3 and 4. For the unbelievers. And even if the gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. The God of this age is, has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. 
Okay, in a sense, they have an excuse. Because they're, the veil <clears throat> has been veiled. But guess what? The veil is no longer there. So why are they perishing now? Jesus has already come. He died. He took on the sins of the world. Can you imagine that? Joy sung the song. I like it too. He's the same yesterday. He's the same tomorrow. He's the same God. Now if this same God was smart enough, strong enough, powerful enough to meet us in the condition, in the state we were in, and to bring us right here where we are right now, keep us, provide for us, heal us, and forgive us, what's the problem? Why do we still hold on to the dirty clothes? Because I, I, I did a little research, and it, it was about in England. In England in 1685, I think it was. Joy, you'll get it for me a little later. <laughs> in England in 1685, they had a, a, a spread of a plague. Hit the whole uh, 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 country. And it says that those that had money were leaving. But the thing of it was... Because their clothes were so contaminated that they took off the old clothes that, was, that, 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 that were contaminated with the plague. And guess what they did with them? They gave the old contaminated clothes to the poor people. So look at this. Now, the poor people walking around in name brand clothes... Now they're walking around in a look of royalty, but just as filthy as ever. They got on the king's robes and, they, and, 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 and the fine raiment, but it's the things that they threw away because they was contaminated. When we don't follow God's rule and we don't follow the, the things that God has called us to, you know what? We're putting on those same old contaminated clothes. You'll find yourself, because you put on those old clothes again when you're supposed to be new, we put on those old clothes, and guess what? We find ourselves in them same old situations and places. The same places where you say, oh, I ain't going back there. No, 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 uh -uh. I ain't never doing that again. That's what we say. But our thought patterns, because I tell them, it's, I can't stop the thoughts, but the thing that I say is this. When the thoughts come, I'm not going to allow the thoughts to come and, and, and get a lazy boy and grab a remote control and sit up in my house. He in your house. He got a lazy boy. He's supposed to be, the thought come, yeah, coming through. Keep on through, baby. Because guess what? There's no vacancies here. There's no vacancies. But when he come and your house is not clean and garnished with the word of God, you're living any kind of way, then guess what? He say, oh. he say, wow, can I come over? And then he comes up and then he say, Oh, that's our show. But guess what? That show what you watch ain't got nothing to do with God. But the thing of it is, is change your way of thinking. Change our, 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 our thought patterns. Change the response. If we can't stop all at once, okay, yes, certain things you can. Can't stop smoking right now. Uh, some, of, some of them can't stop cursing right now. Okay, but if the right now, then when? Okay, I can go along with that if, if you're newly saved, you bathe. Okay, maybe I'll give them 30 days. Mad, that's good. We'll go through the 30 days. Give them 30 days. 
We give him the 30 days, fellas. All right, I'll give you 30 days. Now, you got 30 days of reconciliation. Now, after 30 days, you come up to me, every word you're saying, bleep, 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 bleep. Whoa! Hold it, hold it, hold it. What have you been doing? What you been watching? You watching R and X's and everything else? I thought, I thought you were renewing your mind. So after that, that lets me know that you don't went somewhere and you don't picked up the same filthy clothes and you can't let it go. You can't renew your mind because you stuck on yesterday. Yesterday is gone. Let me tell y'all, yesterday is gone. You see, today is Tuesday. When you go to bed at 12 o'clock, it's going to be Wednesday. We can't go back to Tuesday. You can forget about Monday. Set your hopes maybe on Sunday, but that ain't even promised. So guess what? Let's deal with right now, right here, right now. This is the promise. This is what's guaranteed. I love you right now. I'm going to talk to you right, right now. I'm going to act right, right now. I'm going to please God right now. Right now. I might not see y'all no more after, after tonight. I don't know. We on a journey in the morning, right, Casey? We on a journey. On a mission for God. That's why we're going to be all right. But the thing about it is, where your thought pattern is, where, where, where we think, I'm thinking about what God done doing when we leave here. I'm thinking about what God doing right here. I'm thinking about God. Work on me. Ha, huh, you thought I was going to say you, huh? Work on me. <laughs> Because that's where it begins. It begins with us. It begins with us. Work on me. Yes, I'm a, I'm a, a work in progress. Put me back on, on, on the potter's wheel daily. Take off them sharp edges. God, hey, hey, hey. I should have did it this way. My thought pattern was messed up. I went back to yesterday what they did to me, what they said to me, how they treated me. Guess what? That's gone. Guess what? You made it through. Whatever that was that was holding you back, whatever that was that was holding you down, whatever that was what the enemy was trying to use to keep you in bondage. Because the word of God said, he that the son said free is free indeed. You're not just conquerors. Remember that. You're not just conquerors. You're more than conquerors. Because, yes, we won this battle, but we, went from, we go from fate to fate and victory to victory. Okay, we got this battle won, but what about this one? Guess what? He's the same God that did it at that battle. He's going to be the same God that's going to do it at this battle. And he's going to be the same God that's going to do it at the next battle. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. I got to quit thinking. I got to quit thinking and do more trusting. Because the first part of trust in the Lord, not trust in James. Trust in the Lord with all my heart and lean not to my own understanding. Because mine is short. I might base it on how I feel. You didn't treat me right. You said the wrong thing to me. So, oh, because you did this, then uh, I get you. That ain't what God says. <laughs> no. Uh -uh. No evil for evil. He said, if you hold your peace, let the Lord fight your battle. Hold your peace. And let the Lord fight your battle. Y'all ain't hearing that. Hold your peace and let the Lord fight your battles. Let him fight. Can't nobody outbeat him. Can't nobody fight more than he can. Let him fight the battles. Let him change our hearts. Soften the hearts. And even in times when we feel that we want to get eager. Uh, okay, I forgive you, but I won't forget. What happened? You forgive me, but you won't forget. Well, that means you straddling some kind of fence that ain't there. 
do you on a part-time love? You know that, right? You forgive me, but you won't forget. So now I got to walk on eggshells, wondering when the time going to come when you won't forget. And then I'm going to hear about this later. I will say ladies, because y'all got total recall. But, <laughs> but forgive me, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I'm going to hear about this tomorrow. <laughs> but they do, believe me. <laughs> so we, we have to rely on the Lord to go and work on us in every area. And I'm going to close too because I want I to won't pray like never before. I really, really do. And um, <laughs> Because I do know this, that as long as our minds are stayed on him, as long as our minds is being renewed daily, we can't lose. Because a renewed mind, the, the, the hardest part is, is this 18 inches from here to here, from here to here. That's life. From here to here is a game changer. When it comes here, you can filter that. But the response is going to come from here. Whatever's in here is going to have a response. And that response is going to come from here. The attack on each one of us, where does, where does Satan come? He comes here. But he don't, he don't do the work. But he, he work it. He work it and then it goes from here to here. And guess what? Here we go. I ain't got to take that off of them. Uh -uh, no. Whoa. Well, he done painted that picture. We have an Eve attack. You, you surely die. No, here, taste it. Mmm, it's good. Here, take some at him. Both of us go. Change your way of thinking. Change, surrender to God, everything. Surrender to God, everything. He wants total control. Surrender to God, everything. Everything. And see. See, will he lie? See, will he not do what you ask him to do? I don't care what it is. Put him to the test. I ain't a bet man, but I tell you what, everything I got is on God. Not only that, he might do it, but he will do it and it's done. He said, I'm not a man that I shall lie, neither son of man. I even have to repent. And if he said that he's doing it, not only is he doing it, but he's making it good, not only good, but very good. God wants us to know that, to renew your minds, change your thought patterns, even towards each other. The greatest thing is that we renew our relationship with Jesus Christ. Renew it daily. Renew it daily. Do, do I make mistakes? Yes. Have I failed? Yes. Have I missed it? Yes. Does he still love me? Yes. In spite of everything that's happened? Yes. Even in my mistakes? Yes. When I think I know it all? Yes. And then he corrects me and says, you don't know nothing? Yes. Yes. Everything about him is yes and amen. We don't want to say maybe. We don't want to say maybe. He said yes and amen. So the thing tonight is, take control of your thoughts. Think about it when you get home. And think about the results and the response of your thoughts. Not just the thoughts, but what does the thoughts cause you to do or say? A go. What does these thoughts do? Do they glorify God? Do they give him glory? Is he pleased with what comes off your lips? Are you building up a brother, sister? With your lifestyle? But just trust him in that. And keep that in mind. 
And that's all I got. Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother James. Amen. Church, I don't know about you all, but I am so challenged in my heart. I am convicted today. That first verse that, uh, that Brother James pulled up, Colossians chap- chapter 3, verse 8. Jeremy, could you put that on the screen for a second? You know, the church of Colossae, this was a church, okay? These were people who knew and were acquainted with the name of Jesus. These were Christians, okay? These were not just worldly folk, right? We know that because he says, uh, uh, you know, you used to walk in, in, in a certain way, and now you're walking in a different way, right? But then he says in verse 8, what does that say? That second sentence. But now you must also rid yourselves of all such things as these. He's speaking to Christians. Christians who sometimes, and I know for me, I've been walking with the Lord for a number of years. And there are some things in me, man, that I'm not happy with. There is some areas in my life where I lack being like Christ. Am I alone here today? Or is there somebody who knows what I'm talking about? This, because we, you, we, a lot of times we can sit in church and hear a word and we think, wow, wouldn't that be great for, if my neighbor heard this? Wouldn't that be great for my mom or my dad? or my spouse who needs to hear that word. But we never think, what about you? What area in your life are you lacking in, even as a Christian? I was just talking to Maria the other day at my, at, in my home. I, I, I have read of mature Christians. Paul confronting Peter, okay, the apostle. Is anyone here greater than Peter? Please raise your hand if you are. The apostle right who walked with Jesus and yet Paul after Jesus died in his ministry sees a problem in Peter and he's favoring some people um, because they're Jewish and he's showing them uh, kind of uh, uh, partial he's partial towards them and he's he's kind of shying away from the Gentiles in a meeting they had and Paul let him know to his face what are you doing this is wrong. You are wrong, right? A mature Christian. And yet there are areas in our lives where God, man, where sometimes we fall short. Sometimes, and you know, that's really a a test of, of where we are sometimes with God. Do we look like Jesus? Do we? When we're at work, when we're at home, oh my goodness. I, I'm going to be, be real for a second. I've been, and I'm not boasting in this or anything. I've been married like three and a half weeks, right? And like literally, she, this woman here is already pointing out areas in my life, okay, that I don't want to hear about. She says that I'm not gentle when I'm speaking or whatever that means. That I can be like harsh and this. No, I'm not. You all know that, right? <laughs> I love you, babe. No, she is right. I love Jesus with all of my heart. I gave him my life years ago, but there are areas in me that have been off, that have been wacky, that have not been a representation of Christ. Do you think God can anoint that? Do you think he can put his hand of blessing on someone who is not walking like Jesus walked? Do we really think that? We are dead silent in this building because we know what I'm saying is true. Right? We all have areas in our lives where, oh my goodness, we need Jesus. And we have no room to point a finger at anyone here. And you know what? I want to do something special, something different. 
I want to call us up here in a moment as a church in repentance to God. I am feeling a repentance in me for areas I've been just kind of looking back on my life as I've I've just taken a step back these last few weeks and have been evaluating myself as a Christian. And you know what? A lot of times we don't do that. We don't observe ourselves. David prayed, search me, O God, and see if there is any wicked way in me. Who, who here prays that? I don't pray that all the time. We need to, to search ourselves, to ask God. I don't care if you've been walking with God for 30, 40 years. Where are you lacking in the Lord? Where can you grow? Right? This is a beautiful message that Brother James brought to us. And I don't mean to be preachy here tonight. My heart is just heavy. And I want to call up here to the front anyone. And I'm t- only the boldest Christians are coming up here. If you've got areas in your life like me, I'm going to be, I'm first in line where we need the help of Jesus to correct us in our character or in some areas where like, Lord, I'm lacking and I need you and I want to call us up here. Come on. We're going to pray for a few moments today. I'm literally first in line right here. I've got areas that that need to change in my heart. Come on. Get real with God. Come on. Let's come up front. We're going to take a moment to just ask God for more of Jesus, for more of His Christ-likeness, for less of ourselves and more of Him. Come on, begin to pray. Don't worry about the person next to you, to the right or to the left. Begin to talk to God. Tune out everyone here in this building. It's just you, us and Jesus right now. Come on, begin to pray.